Now on 4 News Now at 6, evacuation orders still in place for the wildfire burning in South Spokane. Hear from one couple who stayed behind to defend their home. We have more hot and very dry weather in the forecast. I'll let you know how hot it is going to get in the first alert forecast. Plus, former President Donald Trump now faces even more charges. His reaction to the four new federal charges. You're watching 4 News Now at 6. It was, it was scary. It was very scary. Yeah. People living southwest of Spokane are breathing a sigh of relief tonight after fire crews rushed to get that brush fire yesterday surrounded in tonight's continued fire watch team coverage. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kirsten O'Connor. Aaron Luna has the night off. We do know now that the fire burned several areas after starting yesterday near the Eagle Ridge neighborhood. It was right off of Cheney Spokane Road and Sherman Road west of Highway 195. And even though the flames have died down since yesterday, those evacuations orders are still in effect. Everyone living south of 47th east of Dorset Road, north and west of Cheney Spokane Road are still being told to get out now and level two evacuations, meaning be ready to leave, are in place south of Hallett Road in between Assembly and Dorset Road. Our Allison Martinez has more updates on how fire crews tackled this fire before it could destroy homes. Fire crews from four different counties and 14 aircraft swiftly eliminated Monday's West Hallett fire. As nearby residents received evacuation orders, they scrambled to protect their properties, their animals, and themselves. It prepares you and you realize how valuable your life is. Nancy Logan and her husband Mike live in a home just feet from Monday's West Hallett fire. Mike built the home himself and has spent his life continuing to work on it. When they learned of the fire, their first step was to protect their home. So we immediately started just drenching everything. I was in the back and drenching down the back of the house and the roof, uh, just out there drenching everything down. The fire grew to 150 acres throughout the course of the afternoon. And it was moving fast. It was moving fast. And neighbors were uh, going by with their trailers and their cars and their belongings. And... Uh, it was, it was frightening. Nancy said in the midst of the chaos, her neighborhood made time to check on one another. This is a very close-knit uh, area, and we all have, you know, sizable pieces of property, but we're all very close. And uh, uh, we were all checking in with each other, making sure they were safe and if they had places to go. As crews continue to clean up the West Hallett fire, the Department of Natural Resources has this word of advice. Please, folks, just be careful out there right now. Um, think if you're going to you know, mow your weeds or do things like that. Just be careful of rocks, sparks, um, so we don't have to do any more of this than necessary. For any fire updates, you can visit our website, kxly.com. Reporting in Spokane, Allison Martinez, 4 News Now. Thank you, Allison. The West Hallett Fire proves that a fire can start at any moment and spread quickly. You'll want to make sure you and your family are prepared in case you ever have to evacuate. Head over to kxly.com slash firewatch where you can find a step-by-step -step guide on making a wildfire action plan. Chief Meteorologist Chris Crocker joins us now. And Chris, we did watch the winds. They were, you know, they were not helping firefighters at the beginning of that firefight yesterday afternoon, but things changed dramatically. Uh, yes, the winds died down yesterday evening, and boy, once they did, they were able to really make some progress. And today, winds have been generally light. Right now, it is very nice in terms of firefighting in the breeze. We have west-southwest winds at just five miles per hour in Spokane. It's calm and cheeny, two mile per hour winds in Spangle. Winds will remain light tonight. Tomorrow, we may see some some stronger gusts, but in the 15, possibly as high as 20 mile per hour range in the afternoon. Typically, it wouldn't even be worth mentioning, but anytime you're talking about fire, any sort of movement in the air can be a, a problem. Temperatures, meanwhile, 89 right now at the airport in Spokane. We did hit 90 degrees to start 
on our August. We are in the 90s all the way through the I-90 corridor till we get to Post Falls and Coeur d'Alene. We are in the 80s. It is going to be hotter tomorrow. Our warming trend continues. We'll be in the mid to upper 90s around the Spokane area. Here's another factor, the relative humidity. Right now we are only in the teens. We will be in the teens and single digits again tomorrow. So dry and hot weather, but the wind may not be much of an issue. Meanwhile, here's a look at our lows tonight. We'll be cooling down nicely thanks to those uh, clear skies. Dry air cools very efficiently. It also heats up very efficiently. So we see those extremes, very crisp mornings, but very hot afternoons. Your evening forecast, clear skies, light winds, and temperatures in the 70s by 11 o'clock. I'll be back with your seven day forecast in just a few minutes, Kirsten. Breaking news tonight, former President Donald Trump has been indicted once again, this time in connection to efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Mr. Trump now faces four more felony charges, including conspiracy to defraud the United States and conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. The special counsel's Jack Smith releasing a statement after the indictment was unsealed. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6th, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government. The former president releasing a statement saying in part, quote, this is nothing more than the latest corrupt chapter in the continued pathetic attempt by the Biden crime family and their weaponized Department of Justice to interfere with the 2024 presidential election, end quote. Mr. Trump is set to be back in court on Thursday. A former editor at the Spokesman Review now says he is innocent after being arrested on child pornography charges. Right, as to count one, possession of depictions of a minor engaged in sexually explicit conduct in the first degree. What is your plea? Not guilty. Stephen Smith was arraigned this morning where he pleaded not guilty to 11 counts. Police raided Smith's home in the South Hill July 20th and seized his electronic devices. Detectives say Smith used the Cash App to pay girls between the ages of 10 and 14 in Kentucky for sexually explicit videos and photos. Well, these 19 states on your screen, including Washington, are challenging Idaho's travel abortion ban. The law makes it a crime for adults to help minors travel to another state for abortion care. Tonight at 6 o'clock, our Rania Kaur explains why the state's attorney general says this ban is illegal. Kirsten, it all comes back to when Roe versus Wade was overturned. The now 20 states fighting this travel ban argue that in the same way Idaho is well within its rights to make decisions within its own borders, the states are well within their rights to make their own decisions. That includes how they use their authority to protect public health in their states. Since Idaho's abortion ban, the Planned Parenthood Clinic in Pullman has seen a huge increase in people from Idaho trying to get an abortion. The lawsuit cites that in June last year, 62% of Planned Parenthood patients were from Idaho. By July, that number jumped to 78%. Idaho's ban threatens to punish medical providers and residents of other states for giving information and assistance to minors to get them an abortion. The states also argue that what qualifies as abortion trafficking or recruiting isn't really clear within Idaho's law. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson says the Constitution protects an individual's rights to travel between states and Washington is standing up for the Constitution. In Washington, it's a right for people of any age to consent to their own abortion. This is the third time that Washington has fought against Idaho's abortion ban. As we get new information, we'll continue to keep you updated right here on KXLY and on our website at KXLY.com. In studio, I'm Ronnie Kaur for News Now. Ronnie, thank you. More Fentanyl and meth are off the streets after Kootenai County Sheriff's deputies say a police dog found the drugs during a traffic stop. This happened in Post Falls last Thursday. Deputies say they stopped a vehicle and a dog, a canine, smelled drugs coming from it. This is the canine named Lord. He specializes in narcotic detection. Deputies say a search of the vehicle turned up 
over 81 grams of meth and 250 fentanyl pills. Taylor Gleemaker and Gregory Early, both from Washington, were arrested on several drug charges. Still ahead on 4 News Now at 6, building back the city of Malden. How it's still recovering nearly three years after that devastating fire. Track live radar on the 4 News Now weather app. The 4 News Now first alert weather app. Download or update it today. This is the beautiful Nissan Rogue. Check it out. Futuristic front, spacious interior, and a functional rear hatch. But beauty is only part of why we know you'll love this SUV. There's a full package of advanced technology, a customizable digital 12-inch dashboard, the parking split screen, and check this, Wi-Fi connections for up to seven devices. The Nissan Rogue is a great SUV, and our friendly dealership is a great place to test drive one. Just off Highway 95, Coeur d'Alene Nissan. Do you have property damage? Burke's Restoration provides full-service emergency response for residential and commercial disasters. Wind damage? Burke's can handle that. Is flooding your problem? Burke's Restoration knows just what to do. Fire or smoke damage? Call Burke's today. You didn't plan on a disaster, but you have a choice on who restores it. Choose the best. Burke's Restoration takes care of fire, smoke, wind, or water damage, and more. Tell your insurance company you choose Burke's Restoration. Call or click today. I'm Mark Peterson, the Extreme Team at Horizon Credit Union, ready to take on the next task. If you know of a project that needs an Extreme Team makeover, go to KXOI.com to nominate it. 4 News Now Extreme Team brought to you by Horizon Credit Union. The new double pepperoni crazy crust pizza is so nice, we pepperonied it twice. With classic and old world pepperoni, sprinkled with toasted cheeses and garlic parm crust, you've got to see it's slow burn. Available for $8.99, only at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. My late father-in-law lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had AMD. I didn't know it then, but it can progress to GA, an advanced form of the disease. His struggle with vision loss from AMD made me want to help you see warning signs of GA. Like straight lines that seem wavy, blurry or missing visual spots that make it hard to see faces, like this one, or trouble with low light that makes driving at night a real challenge. If you've been diagnosed with AMD and notice vision changes, don't wait. GA is irreversible. It's important to catch it early. Talk to your eye doctor about GA and learn more at gawontwait.com. So, how's the menopause going? Unexpected rage, hot flashes, exhaustion. Big fan. Here's to being tired all day. And up at night. Said no woman ever. Estrovan relieves major menopause symptoms. The city of Malden hosted a groundbreaking ceremony today for its new fire station. Nearly three years after a fire destroyed the cities of Malden and Pine City, on Labor Day of 2020, the Malden fire destroyed 15,000 acres. It demolished more than 85% of buildings in the area, including the city's fire station and post office. Malden is about 45 minutes south of Spokane, and our Marissa Rio went to the groundbreaking ceremony today and has more on the current state of the city and what the building means to the community. Nearly three years ago, the Malden fire, also known as the Bab Road fire, came in and destroyed a lot of this community. Today marked great progress for recovery. It was very traumatic and something I would never in my lifetime expect to experience. More than 65 homes were lost in the Bab Road fire. One Malden resident who almost lost her house in the fire said the experience was traumatizing. She remembers seeing the fire station on fire while hosing flames off of her deck. They just pulled up. It was like so devastating to see them wondering like now what? Um, and here we are three years later and we're just finally now breaking ground for our new building, which is so exciting for me after experiencing our whole town burn down. The city is still on the road to recovery. 28 homes have been replaced so far, but there's more to go. Frick said the past three years have been tough for Malden. I'm just from my own experience trying to rebuild a deck. It was very hard. Nobody wanted to come out here because we're so far removed from the large city. Contractors don't need to work in a small community. They can stay in town. Um, so, yes, it means a lot to be where we are today. And the community said Mayor Dan is like the little engine who could. 
never taking no for an answer and always persevering. I've lived here my the, the last 27 years, 28 years. Uh, I know the people. They really are good people. You know, when you have people ask you something and they've got a tear in your eye, then it just jacks you up and you say, okay. Mayor Dan said the building of the fire station and post office is the first real structure Malden will have since the Bab Road fire. Today, the city came together to turn dirt there we go. for the future. This is what used to be the post office here in Malden. The city hopes that the new post office will be up and running in 90 days. Reporting in Malden, Marissa Rio, 4 News Now. It is the primary election. Tonight we are monitoring multiple races in our area. One of the largest is for Spokane Mayor. Four people, including the former Director of Department of Commerce, Lisa Brown, are hoping to defeat incumbent Mayor Nadine Woodward. And we're also keeping an eye on the race for Spokane City Council President. The three candidates on the ballot are current City Council member Betsy Wilkerson, Kim Please, and Andy Rathbun. However, we did learn earlier today that Rathbun did concede from the race. So Wilkerson and Please will be advancing to the general election no matter how the numbers come out tonight. And our 4 News Now's Natalie Grant is live tonight at Spokane Election Headquarters. So Natalie, things are changing by the hour. How long can people still get their ballots turned in? Well, Kirsten, you still got a couple hours here. Eight o'clock is when those polls close tonight. You can drop you off your ballot here at the election headquarters or at any ballot box across the city. If you like to see where those are located, we do have a full list on our website, kxly.com. But throughout the night here, we have seen waves of people coming in, registering to vote, but also casting their ballots here tonight. So you still got a couple more hours here before things close. Now, last week when we spoke to election officials, they said they had already received 16% of ballots so far which is about 54,000 of them. They're expecting 80,000 in total, which is a 25% voter turnout. And as of this morning, they received 20% of those. They're doing pretty good for numbers so far. Now, Kirsten, as you mentioned, we are keeping an eye on several races tonight. And you can stay with us right here on 4 News now as we have complete coverage coming up tonight at 11 on KXLY Nightside. And you can also get your results pushed right to your phone if you download the new KXLY mobile news app. Reporting in Spokane tonight, Natalie Grant, 4 News Now. Thank you, Natalie, for that update. And if you still need to vote, but you don't have a ride, Lime has you covered. The company is offering free scooter or bike rides for free, up to $15 each way. All you have to do is enter the promo code Spokane Primary 2023. Once again, you have until 8 o'clock to cast your vote. And be sure to tune in to Nightside at 11 o'clock for the latest results. Starting off August with 90 degree heat, our average high 87 started the day off at a cool 59, which is actually one degree below average. 825 is our sunset time tonight. It gets even hotter in the forecast before things cool down. I'll let you know what to expect after the break. Stream 4 News Now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Craig Swap and Associates. It's time for a new shower, but you don't want the hassle. You just want it done. Rebath, from start to stunning. Call us or visit rebath.com and save $750 off your tub or shower replacement. I felt like nobody wanted me. Um, I was just, felt like my life was already over. I had nightmares every single day in my, my birth mom's house. It was just really scary for me living there. My biggest fear was that I was gonna age out and not know how to be sufficient on my own. At a certain age, like, they don't want you, you're troubled and stuff. But, like, inside I knew, like, I'm not a troubled kid. I know what I'm meant for, like, why I'm here. I was scared, I was lost, and I felt hopeless. Even if I wanted to be adopted, who would adopt a 17-year-old? He deserves to feel happy, yeah. to feel loved, and I just wish I had gotten him sooner. Day with 
with Good Morning Northwest and Good Morning America. This is the summer of me. I'm in the summer. Featuring the summer of bonus episodes of MASH and the summer of all new episodes of Collector's Call. Watch the summer of me over the air on MeTV 4.2. It's time for a new shower, but you don't want the hassle. You just want it done. Rebath, from start to stunning. Call us or visit Rebath.com and save $750 off your tub or shower replacement. Right now it is 90 degrees in Coeur d'Alene and sunny, sunny and 89 in Spokane. Air quality is in good shape despite the fact that we do have wildfires burning throughout the western United States and Canada. You'll see the haze on the horizon, but so far uh, things have been pretty good in terms of that smoke settling at the surface. In fact, the main pollutant in our air for most of the day has been ground level ozone, uh, which becomes a problem once that temperature gets into the 90s, so maybe even a bigger issue tomorrow. 57 for an overnight low tonight, light winds, mostly clear skies, another great night for firefighters. Uh, to get a handle on things before we head up to a high of 94 tomorrow. Hot and sunny at the highest wind gusts up to 20 miles per hour right around that fire area um, west of the Spokane area. 15 to 20 mile per hour winds are possible. Winds tend to funnel down that Leitaw Valley and may become an issue. Our weather is going to be hot for the next few days. Wind shouldn't be much of an issue. It is going to be dry, but we may start to see that dry air being replaced with monsoonal moisture. That is the seasonal reversal of winds that brings the heavy rain to the desert southwest and is starting to creep closer to the inland northwest. You see showers and thunderstorms throughout a huge region as moisture wraps around an area of high pressure over Texas right now. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Uh, this moisture is getting pushed gradually to the north. Now the green that you see here is not precipitation but relative humidity and we are going to watch our relative humidity increase as this moisture gets closer and closer to us through the day on Wednesday, a little bit closer on Thursday. Here's Thursday morning and then by the time we're into Friday and the weekend, we're going to start to really feel the impact of that monsoonal flow. Our relative humidity will start to increase and in these weather patterns, every late summer, that is when we get the closest to what we would consider humid or muggy weather. Uh, our dew points escalate by our standards and this is all good news for firefighters. What would not be good news is if we added some thunderstorm activity to go along with the um, that moisture in terms of lightning over the mountains. The showers that come along with it, good, but we don't need any lightning. Overnight lows tonight, nice. We'll be in the 40s in many locations, including Colville, Pullman, St. Mary's, 48 in um, Sandpoint. High temperatures tomorrow in the 90s, just about everywhere, 102 degrees in Lewiston. Your planning forecast, we're going to stay in the 90s Wednesday, Thursday. Then we start cooling down, a function of the increase in clouds as that monsoonal moisture works its way in and air with humidity with moisture in it does not cool or warm up quite as efficiently. So you'll notice our overnight lows a little bit higher, our daytime highs a little bit lower. Best chance to see the thunderstorms around the valley locations will be on Saturday. We will be tracking that very closely. Kirsten. Thank you, Chris. We are excited to announce the new and improved 4 News Now app. It is faster and even easier to use. 4 News Now digital anchor Rob King joins us now with a look at some of the new features. Kirsten, in addition to being faster, the new app also looks cleaner and allows you, the viewer, to find the article you're looking for much more easily. Open the app and right at the top, tap Watch KXLY Plus to stream newscasts and additional exclusive content like interviews with bands in town. One of the best new features is the customization. Whether you want sports, weather, or education news, you can make the homepage how you want. 
The new 4 News Now mobile app is available to download right now on both iPhone or an, and Android. Or if you already have the app, head to the App Store to update. The 4 News Now mobile app is available to download now on both iPhone and Android. Or if you already have the app, head to the App Store to update. I'm Rob King. Rob, thank you. Still ahead, the Mega Millions once again over a billion dollars. Find out your chances of winning and how much you'll actually get if you hit the jackpot. Next on 4 News Now at 6. Download the 4 News Now app today. Send them back to school looking and seeing their best. Get premium eyewear and A-plus patient care from the experienced team at Shopco Optical. Cross off eye exams on your back to school checklist. Schedule their comprehensive exam today. People who come to the Inland Northwest rave about its beauty. For those of us who live and work here, we couldn't agree more. From its iconic history to a ton of new beginnings, we have farm to table roots and access to nature right at our back door. And as a community member, BECU wants to honor those who work together to make life better for our region. Come out and enjoy top female athletes competing for the LPGA Tour. BECU, proud sponsor of the Epson Tour at Circling Raven Golf Course this August. After Advil. Feeling better? On top of the world! Before Advil. Advil targets pain at the source of inflammation. When pain comes for you, come back fast with Advil Liquid Gels. Weather alert days on 4 News Now. These are days in which we want you to be safe. With the hot and dry conditions, there is an increased fire risk. The first alert weather team pinpoints the most impactful and dangerous days, warning you early on air and online. Those gusty winds and a lightning strike, that's all it takes. Here's 5 o'clock. Here's 6 o'clock. Weather alert days, another way we're keeping you safe on 4 News Now. That's what we mean when we say expect more. Despite the cape, Tom here has no actual superpowers. He just entered the Super 7s giveaway at Northern Quest. Now he's got a shot at 77777 bucks this month and a Yukon Denali next month. So naturally, he feels super. And we're feeling lucky he's not in a full spandex bodysuit. The Super 7's giveaway at Northern Quest. Get your free entries daily. Details at northernquest.com. Next live, Taylor Lautner and his wife, Taylor Lautner. Okay, what now? <laughs> double the Taylors, double the fun. Doubly excited. Yes, doubly excited. Watch live tomorrow at 9, right after GMA. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Shopco Optical welcomes more insurance plans than ever. Call to book an exam and verify coverage. 4 News Now is brought to you by Carl's Jr. New at 6, a Mega Millions jackpot topping a billion dollars is up for grabs in tonight's drawing. CNN's Karen Kafe is in Washington, D.C. with a look at your odds and payouts and the warnings about scams. Mega Millions crossing the billion dollar mark. Winner, winner, winner. winner, winner Thank winner. you. After no winners Friday, the jackpot has climbed to $1.05 billion for the drawing at 11 p.m. Eastern Time Tuesday night, leaving ticket buyers to dream. You never know. Could be you. <laughs> or me. But financial planners say don't just dream, plan. State Farm says before a winner claims a prize, they should call a lawyer, an accountant, and a financial advisor. Depending upon the state, a winner may have a few days or even a few months to step forward. Kiplinger says large prize winners will often need to choose between a lump sum payment minus taxes or payouts over 20 or 30 years. Investing a lump sum well could grow that money, but the yearly payouts will spread the wealth out over time. And the Federal Trade Commission says lottery and sweepstakes for are among their top reported scams. They often start with a phone call or a tax telling a consumer they won a prize but need to give the scammer personal information or money. Tuesday's Mega Millions contest is for the second billion dollar lottery prize within weeks. A Powerball drawing on July 19th yielded a winning ticket in Los Angeles for a $1.08 billion jackpot. The biggest Mega Millions jackpot to date was $1.537 billion won in South Carolina in 2018. A $1.348 billion ticket was sold in Maine in January. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. 
Aircraft pilots saved many homes from West Hallett fire on Monday. One of the fire boss pilots tells me he was making 25 drops on flames. Now the question is, where are they coming from and what's available for this wildfire season? That's coming up. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. This is your summer to smile, to raise your glass and reconnect, to reel in the fun and savor every bite. To help you get ready, your Aspen Dental team is celebrating 25 years of affordable care with an epic Summer of Smiles event. Don't miss enjoying a moment with our on-site labs to help you fast and 20% off your denture care. So whether you need a new look or a quick fix, you can celebrate with a smile all season, always at Aspen Dental. Book today. Are you ready for some fun? Come to the North Idaho Fair, where there are acres of fun for everyone. From thrilling concerts to heart-pumping monster truck shows, it's all here. Exciting rides, games, and delicious food. Don't forget about the rodeo, where you can watch cowboys and cowgirls show off their skills. There's a jetpack water stunt show, pig racing, as well as magicians, hypnotists, and more to keep you entertained. Bring the kids to Adventureland. They'll enjoy a petting zoo and hands-on farming experiences. The North Idaho Fair has something for everyone. So come join us for acres of fun. With Gold Bond, you can age on your own terms. Retinol Overnight means the smoothing benefits of retinol are now for your whole body. Plus, fast-working crepe corrector diminishes wrinkled skin in just two days. Gold Bond, champion your skin. Did Dean tell you he was in a school play? Is he playing somebody white? Never mind. Jack McBrayer guest stars. You have a young Sidney Poitier thing. A little help? Any chance to take a ticket, give me my dime back. Where should I walk? Right here? Is this good? Yeah, you can walk right there. This is your show. Do yeah. whatever you want. You walk in. It's live with Kelly and Mark. Wow, that was a nice reception. New research suggests that French fries may be linked to depression. No. I experience euphoria upon eating fries. Euphoria. Elation. All the E's. Every weekday morning. That's right. It all goes down on Daytime's number one talk show. Yeah, of course that. All that. <laughs> We're sitting on a couch with the new co-host husband and wife yes. team. <laughs> Watch live with Kelly and Mark, weekdays at 9 a.m., only on 4 News Now. Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6.30. We are continuing our fire watch coverage tonight. Cheney Spokane Road is back open after being closed almost 24 hours because of a fast moving wildfire burning just south of Spokane. Level three evacuations, meaning get out now, are still in place. If you look up at your screen, for anyone living south of 47th Street, east of Dorset Road, north and west of Cheney Spokane Road, then level two evacuations are in place south of Hallett Road in between Assembly and Dorset Road. Fire crews say that this fire could have been much worse if it wasn't because of 14 aircraft attacking the fire from the air. Tonight at 6.30, our Peter Choi explains how these aircraft are able to save homes so quickly. Saving homes from West Hallett fire on Monday. Dozens of aircraft making water and retardant drops on flames. Neighbors on the other side of fire say they are thankful for the quick air support. To have, I hope we have this many resources. And then the question is, is 14 planes enough? Handle on top of the float. Chris Hopman was one of the fire boss pilots combating the West Hallett fire on Monday. Busy, busy start to the season. I think we're still ramping things up. Uh, I don't think we're in full, quite full swing of fire season yet. 26 aircraft were on scene on Monday from Deer Park, Omec, Yakima, Moses Lake, Coeur d'Alene, and Southern California, all requested by ground firefighters. But we sit here all day waiting for that piece of paper, and often 
they're listening in there on the radio, so they hear when the ground firefighters are saying, hey, we're gonna need air resources. So before we even get the piece of paper, we already know it's coming. Now the pilot tells me the key here is to get to the scene as quickly as possible. Like the one fire yesterday, West Halle fire was 13 minutes. The pilot says everything is teamwork. A lot of times having to deal with talking to Spokane Approach, also, we're having to talk with our air attack to let him know where we are. We're listening on another radio to hear what's happening on the ground, what they're requesting. So sometimes I'm, we're listening to four or five radios at the same time. The DNR says the amount of air support depends on the size of fire and availability in the region. The pilot says the public should be careful when aircrafts are scooping water from lake, asking them to step out of the water for a quicker response. Now, it's not just us that it, 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 we're just one little part of everything that goes together to save homes like we did yesterday. In Spokane County, Peter Choi, 4 News Now. Thank you, Peter. Very interesting information. Here is a live look over downtown Spokane, and you can see the staging area for the Spokane Stadium. They're building it there, one Spokane on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Interesting view we have here. Also of the clear skies, other than that little bit of wildfire haze on the horizon that is so typical in August in the inland northwest. And so are nine and we are going to be in the 90s through Thursday with sunny and dry weather. Cooler weather this weekend with the possibility of some isolated thunderstorms. If they were to come along with some rain, that would be perfect. High temperatures today, 90 in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. It was 98 in Lewiston, also in the 90s in Ritzville, Grand Coulee, 88 in Colville and Bonners Ferry, and 86 today in Sandpoint. We are going to be warmer tomorrow just about everywhere in the 90s except Lewiston in the triple digits. Here's a look. 94 in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, St. Mary's, 92 in Sandpoint, 93 degrees in Colville, and again, 102 degrees in Lewiston. Our average high is 87. Some haze on the horizon. Our air quality has been in pretty good shape, just barely into the moderate range at times, good at other times, uh, but you can tell there are fires burning around the region by that haze on the horizon, and that will continue. I'll be back with yours seven day forecast Kirsten and Chris another live look I know you enjoy here mm -hmm. right near our our station and this is one Spokane Stadium downtown Spokane right next to it the Spokane City Council just voted to rename a street Joe Albi way Albi founded the athletic round table which expanded local sports in Spokane for 42 years a stadium was then named after him, but it was torn down to build a new middle school and sports field. Joe Alby Way will run on West Dean between Howard and Washington. The front entry of one Spokane Stadium will be designated as Joe Alby Plaza. Well, two Spokane Transit Authority buses are back on streets following confirmed reports of bed bugs. STA says it took appropriate measures and chemically treated the buses and that riders should not be worried. Our Vanessa Perez joins us tonight with what's being done to keep you comfortable on your next bus ride. Along with those two buses, the restrooms here at the park and ride at Hastings was also closed and treated. Now I spoke to some riders who say they weren't surprised to hear that bed bugs were found. With so many people riding the bus on any given day, there is potential for things to spread. The Spokane Transit Authority says it had two confirmed reports of bed bugs on two buses Friday. It's hard is like really gross and shocking, but then I thought about it. If you know that you have a problem at your house, like don't go on to public transportation. Cowell spends about an hour and a half a day commuting on the bus. The STA says the infected buses were taken out of service immediately, sealed, fumigated, and left to sit 24 hours. First of all, this is never a fun subject for anybody to discuss, but it's important we always address the stigma that it can happen to anybody, anywhere, at any time. Uh, it's a prolific issue in the United States. STA couldn't say what routes the buses traveled because that changes daily. It also heat treated the buses, raising the temperature over 160 degrees. It's also working with the pest control company with the canine that can alert to the presence of bed bugs. We don't consider this any 
uh, any in significant issue. It's uh, something that we've addressed quickly. We stand behind the experience that we provide people in getting to all the places that they need to go every day. Others were shocked to find out what was found on the two buses. I wasn't expecting that, and like I was saying, we just got through having a uh, fumigation in the apartment I, building I live in. And so it's surprising very much to me that we are, there's bed bugs on the bus. The Centers for Disease Control says bed bugs are not known to spread disease. Bites can cause people to itch, which could lead to secondary infections. STA says it'll continue inspections so employees and riders feel comfortable riding public transit. Reporting in Spokane, Vanessa Perez, 4 News Now. Time is running out for you to cast your vote in this year's primary election. Let's send it back out to our Natalie Grant, who's live at the Spokane election headquarters. Natalie, how is it going at this hour? Well, Kirsten, we're still seeing plenty of people coming into the election headquarters here, casting their ballot, registering to vote, all things that you can still do here until 8 o'clock tonight. Definitely won't have time to still get that in. And I'm joined here by the Spokane County, uh, County, County Auditor, Vicki Dalton here, who has been monitoring the state today. Vicki, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you bet. Anytime. It's a great election day. Absolutely. So we talked a little bit earlier about numbers that you guys are hoping to see today. How is the day going so far as far as ballots go? Actually, the day is going very smoothly. We've processed as many ballots as we had on hand. Um, it's a little bit uh, less volume than we were hoping for, but I think it's still going to be a fairly decent turnout. Absolutely. And so looking forward here, what do the next couple of days look like for you guys here counting those ballots and certifying these results? When can people know those final numbers? Well, we will be releasing interim results throughout this week and early into next, but we don't certify until the 15th. So this election isn't done and put to bed until the 15th. So there's still time. You said if you didn't sign your ballot, things along those lines, there's still time to, to contact you guys for any changes there. Certainly. We always have a handful of voters who either forget to sign the envelopes or their signatures don't match. You'll receive a letter and just go ahead and get that back to us by the 14th the day before we certify. Wonderful. Well, Vicki, thank you so much for joining us tonight here. And as we mentioned, 8 p.m. is when polls close. You can still drop off your ballots here at the election headquarters or at any ballot drop box across the area here. And we'll have full coverage of all your primary election results throughout the night tonight and up until votes are certified later this week. We'll return, uh, send things back to you in the studio. Reporting in Spokane, Natalie Grant, 4 News Now. Natalie, thank you. And voters are also going to be deciding on some new measures that could impact property taxes. In air Way Heights voters are being asked to approve a 30 year bond to renovate this building to be a fire station. The department says the current fire station has several issues, including a roof that isn't tall enough. In Cheney, there is a vote on a tax for a new community pool, and that would replace the current pool, which was closed two years ago because of mechanical failures. It would feature a 25 yard pool for lap swimming and then a separate recreational pool with a lazy river. Be sure to download the 4 News Now app and turn on push notifications to get all primary results sent straight to your phone. And the Pac-12 has released details of a potential new media rights deal. Finally, how it could impact the way you watch, let's say, a Washington State football game. And speaking of the Cougars, they kick off fall camp tomorrow. We caught up with head coach Jake Dickert about the upcoming season. That's coming up in about 10 minutes or so in sports. Stay with us. Stream 4 News Now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Rebath Spokane. I'm Chad Young from TheEasyHomeBuyer.com, Spokane and Coeur d'Alene's easiest way to sell your house fast. If you have a few moments, I hope you'll give me the opportunity to make you an instant cash offer on your home. With TheEasyHomeBuyer.com, we will buy your house in as-is condition with no repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. To get your no-obligation cash offer, give us a call or visit us online at TheEasyHomeBuyer.com. Pick up the phone to inquire. Call the easy I'm a little over my head here. When you're looking for a company that's noteworthy, look no further than Mainstream Plumbing. So you want somewhere to play? We got you. A nice, relaxing stay? We got you. Want to be entertained? We got you. Want to play golf all day? We got you. Go to Lake Casino. The winning is just the beginning. It's the 
$180,000 plus van life giveaway. Saturday, September 30th, you could drive away with a new 2023 Pleasure Way Tovino van and $7,000 in cash. Start earning entries August 1st. Visit CDACasino.com for details. Golden Lake Casino. Winning is just the beginning. <laughs> The new Double Pepperoni Crazy Crust Pizza is so nice, we pepperonied it twice. With classic and old world pepperoni, sprinkled with toasted cheeses and garlic parm crust, you've got to see it's slow burn. Available for $8.99, only at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. The former escort and the accused serial killer. Next in Sub Edition, she says she went out on a date with the man charged in the Gilgo Beach slayings. Her scary night with the suspect. Then, the brave woman who entered the sewer system to rescue lost puppies. I knew it was risky, but somebody had to do it. <laughs> Watch the next in Sub Edition. Watch 4 News now at 6 and Inside Edition at 7. Our high temperature today, first day of August, 90 degrees, but not too far above average. 87 is our average high now. As I've said several times, this is as high as this number gets. And in the seven day forecast, it starts to drop. Drop might not be the right verb. It starts to slowly <laughs> decrease. It drops as we get into late September in October, 825, our sunset time tonight with today's a uh, day of 90 degree or higher temperatures. We are now up to 17. We average eight days in August of 90 degree or higher temperatures. We were above average in July. Uh, nine is what we averaged. We had 13. But our temperatures, they were above average for the month of July. We were 16th in terms of our warmest July ever. We were not uh, a particularly remarkable in terms of heat. We were also below average for precipitation, but nowhere near the record of zero. Uh, so hot and dry, yes, but nowhere near record heat and dry conditions for July. Here's our temperature trend over the next seven days. We're going to be above for the next couple, right about average on Friday. And then we dip below Saturday with a chance of showers and thunderstorms before we start warming back up again by, as I mentioned, this time next week, this temperature will be dipping into the mid 80s. Speaking of heat, I did want to update you in case you did not hear that Phoenix ended their streak of 110 degree or higher days yesterday. They hit 108. That was 31 consecutive days of 110 degrees or higher absolutely shattering the previous record set back in the 1970s of 18 days and it was 109 today I believe in Phoenix yes so they haven't started their new streak yet the really hot stuff has moved further to the east you may be saying well those temperatures are actually lower than Phoenix but 107 in Dallas does not feel anything like 109 in Phoenix. As you know, it's got that humidity and heat index readings are taking these numbers into the hundred and teens today. Here is your planning forecast. It's always good to show some of those other numbers before we dive into our heat. 94 Wednesday, 92 on Thursday. Then we dip a little bit back up in the 90s for Monday and Tuesday. And there's that slight chance of showers and thunderstorms on Saturday. But we'll see an increase in clouds and uh, increase in relative humidity. You'll feel it uh, Friday as well. Kirsten? I know immediately when humidity is in the forecast, Chris. <laughs> yes. After living in Florida for seven years, I can sense <laughs> uh -oh, it. Oh, yeah.
They'll uh, laugh when you hear what we think is muggy, though. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> not quite. All right, thank you, Chris. Well, the pharmacy in Colfax is now taking corrective action to ensure opioids and other controlled substances don't fall into the wrong hands again. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, TikTok Pharmacy admitted to filling prescriptions that contained red flags like fraud, a drug seeker, and lack of medical necessity between January and July of 2022. The pharmacy also admitted to failing to keep adequate records for certain controlled substances. Tick Clock has agreed to pay $20,000 in fines, submit to audits, and provide additional training to staff. Here's a look at ABC's primetime lineup tonight. Download the 4 News Now app today. Great Homes of Idaho is having their grand opening August 11th through the 13th in Post Falls. Come in and tour their beautiful model homes by Kit Custom Home Builders. Highly customizable with features and options you'll love. Great Homes has been helping customers in Montana create their dream homes for over 25 years. And with their expansion to Post Falls, they would love to help you experience the same. Join them for their August celebration featuring prize drawings and a 20% discount certificate towards numerous upgrades. Only available during this grand opening weekend. Farming has always been a crucial part of the Inland Northwest. Syngenta is proud to bring you a tribute for our farmers. Farmers take pride in producing the highest quality food possible. They work tirelessly despite the conditions each and every year to provide food, fiber, and fuel for the world through sustainable practices. At Syngenta, we want to say thank you to all farmers for working together to adopt new technologies to enhance production. Recognizing the backbone of our economy, a tribute for our farmers. Brought to you by Syngenta. Injured in a car, truck, or motorcycle wreck? Call Russell and Hill, Attorneys at Law. Where real people with real injuries get real results. 24-7, nights and weekends. Free consultations. And there's never a fee unless we win. Choose two. Choose Russell and Hill. What if my type 2 diabetes takes over? What if all I do isn't enough? Or what if I can do diabetes differently? Now you can with Once Weekly Manjaro. Manjaro helps your body regulate blood sugar. And Manjaro can help decrease how much food you eat. Three out of four people reached an A1C of less than 7%. Plus, people taking Manjaro lost up to 25 pounds. Manjaro is not for people with type 1 diabetes or children. Don't take Manjaro if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Manjaro and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, vision changes, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis and gallbladder problems. Taking Manjaro with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Tell your doctor if you're nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which can cause dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I can do diabetes differently with Manjaro. Ask your doctor about once weekly Manjaro. Give your day a little Kelly. Watch Kelly weekdays at 4. It's time. You know, we're just excited to be back. Well, Washington State's journey to an eighth straight bowl game begins tomorrow. Welcome into sports. I'm Julian Minenso. The Cougars kick off fall camp on Wednesday. Things will be a bit different this year. Head coach Jake Dickert plans to ease the guys into practice before ramping up to full speed. Dickert says he wants to prevent fatigue before the season even starts. The Cougars are holding a few night practices to improve play during night games as well. Washington State had one win and three losses in night games last season. The next three and a half weeks in fall camp will be a big indicator on what we're capable of doing. You know, I think we're more athletic on the offensive side of the ball. I think we've learned from the adversities of last season and are really, really ready to grow on those things. I think defensively, we need to continue to evolve and take the next step. And I'm you know, really excited about the playmakers we have on that side of the ball. And we will have coverage from Washington State training camp starting tomorrow. And the football team isn't the only team starting practice this week. The Washington State women's soccer team opened up training camp at Union Stadium today. The Cougars are looking to have a bounce back season. The team missed the NCAA tournament for just the second time in six seasons last year. But Washington State returns a handful of key players, including the Pac-12's third leading scorer, Margie DeTrezio. 
We used to always be the underdogs. We always wanted to be the top one, and people think that we're at the low. But I think last year really got us a chip on our shoulder to come out here like, and really show them what we really got. The Cougars will take the pitch in an exhibition game against Gonzaga next week, August 10th. Coming to a TV or iPhone near you, according to the reports, the Pac-12 presented details on a potential new media rights deal this afternoon. No agreement was reached, but according to ESPN, the proposed deal would revolve around streaming primarily through Apple. The deal would also include incentivized tiers if certain subscription numbers are met. This proposed proposal comes five days after Colorado announced it's leaving the Pac-12 to join the Big 12. The Pac-12 has been looking for a new media rights partner for more than a year, and the conference's current media rights deal expires in June of 2024. That will wrap us up for sports. We'll be right back. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. ET's inside the all-new Big Brother house. Bigger, better, wilder. Our exclusive tour with Julie Chen Moonves revealing a franchise first. Uh-oh. Next ET. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Entertainment Tonight at 7.30. You expect more from local news. 4 News Now delivers. It's to get you the information you need to plan your day. We begin with breaking news and the breaking news you need to keep your family safe. That's what we mean when we say expect more. Enjoy all things Huckleberry in Trout Creek, Montana, the second weekend in August. This free event is your destination for good old-fashioned family fun with a parade, live music, a pie-eating contest, over 100 local artisans, and much more. Visit HuckleberryFestival.com right now for details. When I was told I had a brain tumor, my life disappeared in a moment. I feared for my future, but even more, I feared for the ones I love. How would they move on without me? But when my doctor told me about the Gamma Knife of Spokane, everything changed. I can get my brain tumor treated in just one day and continue living the life I love. Because of Gamma Knife, I have hope. The 4 News Now Extreme Team back in action. The Northwest Autism Center is expanding into a new space. All these cubicles have to go. The carpet's got to be removed, and we've got a couple of days to do it. It's coming in August. I'm Mark Peterson. 4 News Now Extreme Team brought to you by Horizon Credit Union. My late father-in-law lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had AMD. I didn't know it then, but it can progress to GA, an advanced form of the disease. His struggle with vision loss from AMD made me want to help you see warning signs of GA, like straight lines that seem wavy, blurry or missing visual spots that make it hard to see faces, like this one, or trouble with low light that makes driving at night a real challenge. If you've been diagnosed with AMD and noticed vision changes, don't wait. GA is irreversible. It's important to catch it early. Talk to your eye doctor about GA and learn more at gawon'twait.com. You don't want to miss the 43rd Annual Trout Creek Huckleberry Festival, August 12th and 13th. Free entry and parking, kid and dog friendly, with a parade, over 100 local vendors and an auction, free entertainment, and much more. Visit huckleberryfestival.com right now for details. Live with Kelly and Mark, every weekday morning. Coming up tonight on Nightside, election officials are expecting 80,000 ballots tonight at 25% voter turnout. You have until 8 o'clock to cast your vote. Tune in tonight at 11 for the latest election results. And here's a look at your seven-day forecast. We're going to cool down Friday and Saturday into the 80s and Sunday. An increase in clouds might feel a little muggy, slight chance of showers and thunderstorms. And like you said, it'd be really nice if we could have a little bit of rain. Gosh, boy, do we need it. We need buckets, <laughs> <laughs> but it's to be not expected to be. Yeah, <laughs> at this point. Well, a lot more coming up for you on Nightside. Join us at 11.